Well, what does 300,000 euros buy you in France? It buys you a chateau and a massive amount of land. This was a dream of ours. About 10 years ago it started and we started looking at the possibility of, of whether it was something that we liked to do. We liked to come here on holiday, but we didn't know whether this was ever going to be possible and, and definitely not owning a chateau. I don't think that was in, in, the, in the farthest reaches of our expectations that we'd ever be able to do until we started looking. And it's the best thing that we ever did. As much as it's hard work, we love it. We love the life here. We love everything about it. Now, if we could never do this in the UK. It was never a case of it's something that we could aspire to, to work hard to, because the prices of everything have just gone through the roof. And I know similar things are happening around the world, in America, Australia, everything else. But we could never have 24 acres of land. We could never have seven buildings. It, it, it'd be all in the millions. We couldn't live in the countryside. We could never afford it. And it, it was just never going to be possible. So we started looking for our way out a long time ago. Well, Terry started looking. It started with big houses and the houses got bigger and bigger and bigger as we looked at our budget and see what we could afford. And, and this one fell into our budget. Now, this is an extraordinary amount of work. It is a completely unachievable task for just a few people to do, but it's something that we wanted to do and we wanted to show that we could do it as well. I think anyone looking to do it, don't let things like this put you off because the, the life here, the life and the lifestyle here is worth every single, it's worth every second that you spend here and, and every bit of work that you do. There is taxes to pay, there's land taxes similar to like a council tax in the UK. But one thing I will say is for what we paid for our two bedroom house in England, we pay the same amount here per year for all of this. So we had expected it to be through the roof and it really isn't and the way that it's managed and but let's have a look around and show you exactly what 300,000 euros gets you. I'll take you through it now. Well, we're on the front field here and this is one of the one of the biggest parcels of land that we've got. This is about six acres and you may remember we split it in two with the road. Good decision, needed to do it in the long term. But there's a, no real definitive plans for this field really. It's, it's more for us to... Um, plant trees in. We're going to be planting lots of trees. We've always said that we want to plant 10 times more trees than what we've ever had to take down. So over the years, we'll just keep adding and adding to the trees. And right now, we'll keep going. Like I said, this is the furthest corner out to the front and left of the chateau. So we'll go to the far end of this field and we'll show you the little bits in between and all the other little nice things that we have here. So that's us pretty much at the end of the second biggest parcel of land that we have here. Now this got fruit trees, we've got apple and pear trees here, we've got chestnut trees, we've got all sorts of hazelnuts, loads of hazelnuts. But that takes you up right the way down there, takes you into the corner where the old gates are. We've got the old drive here, which kind of splits the two parcels of land and, and the forest as well. And that's a quarter of a kilometre long. So again, slightly better doing the other one, but not much. Um, but like I said, that takes you to the old gate and that takes you on directly onto the N12 as well. But we'll go through and we'll have a look into the, the biggest parcel of land that we've got really and some that we, we never really show or haven't really shown like around. So let's go and have a look through there.
Well, this is our biggest field and area of land, if you like. Um, and we've never really shown much on this since we've been here. We don't have a lot to do with it. Our land manages this pretty well for us, to be honest with you. And again, does him a favour, does us a favour. And to be honest with you, it takes me days to do this field with my little one metre topper. He's got a four metre topper, he does it in about five passes. So, but all in, this, this one on the backs with the forest is around about 11 to 12 acres. We've got six or seven on the front and the rest's comprised of um, around the chateau and that itself. But this again, it's just, look at it. It's just wonderful how we'd never be able to do anything like this. And just to have to come for walks and enjoy it. Patrick absolutely loves being out here in the countryside. He loves the smells. Wherever you look at him, he's got a dirty face, dirty paws and a waggy tail. So it's just absolutely perfect. But there's little bits here and there's little bits in the history that we found out about as well. So we found that there was just past that tree line there you'll see there's a well you can't see but there's a cider factory there and pretty much where that telephone pole stood now was where our original cider factory stood as well for the actual chateau itself that was what we found had burnt down and that's where there'd been a problem so the the stones that we found in the forest that day it actually came from over here we've got a well right up in the top corner as well which again it, it sounds crazy but it's been built with exactly the same stone that the chateau has been built with in the same attention and care and attention to detail and we've got, as you know, many of you all know, we've got a lake down here. But what you might know is how that actually works and how it's filled and where the water comes from. So right down the middle of this field, there's an underground water source, which in this little copse of trees here that we have in the centre of the field, there's another structure, there's more building. They've built like a, a pond, so whether it used to be for the cattle to actually go and drink from at the time, we're not 100 percent sure but they've actually took the time to actually build something there to actually capture some of the water before it carries on its way right down into the lake now there was a problem when we first got here they changed some of the paths around the chateau itself so what that meant is it cut off our water source now the lake completely dried up an engineer came and seen us a few months after realizing they've made a mistake in putting too much water down the old waterways and asked if they could re um, realign it back to our our land and again we were over the moon at that because it meant we had our lake back and our pond back. And just through here, like I said, as the water course comes down, it leads and it feeds our lake, which again, we'll go around and show you. But just look at all the beautiful fruits and everything we've got grown. We can just go around and pick berries and eat them because again, we know they're free from pesticides, insecticides, everything. And it's amazing. And it's amazing to be able to do that. And like I said, not something that we could ever do in the UK unless we left and walked for miles or went for miles. So let's go and have a look at the lake around there. Well, here we are down at the lake and if you'd have ever told me that I could aspire to own a land with a lake and all the possibilities and the things that we can do here I would never have believed you but this is again just what your money can buy if you're in France it's not the biggest of lakes but it is still, still down on the cadastral as a lake it's not a pond it's not anything else when we say we've got 10 more years work here before we're even close to being somewhere near finished we're not exaggerating and again that doesn't put us off if this is the sort of life you enjoy and you want to do something Again, you don't have to do something on this scale. It can be something much more, much smaller and manageable. But this for us, it's it's serene, it's beautiful, and it's it's the life we want. Well, emerging from the lake, that leads us on to Butterfly Meadow. And again, this is just another beautiful piece of land that we have. And again, it looks overgrown and kept, but it's brilliant, it's wild. And the amount of creatures that live down here is, is unbelievable. And again, it's just bringing us that little bit closer to nature. So if that's what you're looking for from a property, rural France is definitely for you. And this brings us into Secret Garden. And some of you will know the story why we call it Secret Garden. We were here three days before we found this field. This was so overgrown all the way down to here that you genuinely couldn't see from the chateau there all the way to here. You couldn't see that it was three different levels. I'll show you how beautiful stairs now terry's made them all look stunning and gleaming and and just look fresh again and look like they're going to be used again and not like about to fall down and then we have this the wall garden and again it's just brought nature in from everywhere we're surrounded by nature but to see all the butterflies returning the bees returning and everything just looking healthy and happy it really is it's exactly what we wanted from this space and Hopefully for years and years to come, people will be able to come here and enjoy this space the same way that we do because we absolutely love it. And again, I keep saying it, there's no better place to be in the world. But we're not done yet. There's still quite a lot more you get for your money in France.
and this brings us around to the front of the shuttle so you've already seen we've done the front field we've got our drive which we crossed over right the way down there which again it's a, it's a hell of a walk we've got the cottage we've got the chateau itself and then we've got the biggest building that we actually have here the biggest building that we own on this land isn't actually the chateau biggest footprint on the land is the what we call the function room garage and barn and it's it's a huge space and again so much potential with buildings like this you can do so much with them again whether we decide to split the back end of it into four or five little sheets there's the potential to be able to do that we're always going to need the garage and stuff like that and we will use the what we call the function room now maybe as an event space as well in the long term but that's still not all the buildings there's still more and again you get so much more for your money here and these buildings they're solid and you get a report you get a serve and we know it tells you the problems and we this is why we kind of knew where the problems were and these buildings are old they've stood here for the last two three hundred years obviously neglected they're not going to last for two, another two three hundred years but looked after they will they will stand here the solid stone the stone's in amazing condition the ground's in amazing condition and it means that we've got the options to do so many things and you could have the options to do so many things yourselves if you bought like even just the parcels of land with these buildings in whatever condition because you'll normally find that the stone walls themselves are, are in fairly good nick you might see some where roofs come in like you'll see the one on the end here that we've got where the roofs come in but again it's <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this now but after four years here putting a roof on it isn't the end of the world it's something that's doable and again there's so many people here that can do it it's it's not an overly expensive task and then we have our wonderful family area which we share with the chickens which the chickens love this is where the chickens live down here now they do have a fence the fence is to keep things out not keep the chickens in um because the chickens don't listen to the fence they come jumping over it anyway so more it's more a case of just keeping the animals safe from any predators and then we've got the other buildings here so again this is a complete set of buildings now the tops of this would have been the garden sheds for the original walled garden to be able to maintain it and underneath we've got the original pigsties and again so much thought and attention to detail has gone into the actual working of this there's pipes running through the walls when they've built it they've built water pipes into the walls itself and this is 300 years ago this is something that they've clearly thought out in a, in a really detailed manner as well again this is what we used to use as our little greenhouse it's not been necessary this year because the weather's been great and again as i was saying you'll find buildings with the roofs off them but we know even just doing the little stretch of roof ourselves it's not ridiculous and we could easily do something with this the stone itself and the walls themselves are all in such good condition they're not going anywhere these walls pretty much even down here you're talking nearly two foot thick on the walls so all of these buildings are going to last in the like I say as long as the roofs are maintained on them or they're put back on they're going to last for a long long time as well just so you all understand the logistics of where we are this is secret garden wall gardens here and we've just walked right the way around the front of the chateau and come down the sides as well now this was what we used to affectionately call donkey field and the reason we called donkey field because donkey used to live here donkey was never our donkey he came with the land he was the farmer's donkey and he was a bit naughty and a bit of a nuisance so the farmer took him back because he kept escaping but long story short this was an orangery this was the chateau's orangery which they would have been able to to grow fruit and veg throughout the year and be able to sustain themselves even in the harsh months we've obviously utilized the top as a chicken coop which isn't unlikely that it's been used for that before because we've got the doors that we still use the old 200 year old doors are still used to actually keep the chickens in and safe on a night but again a tunnel lots of tunnels here at la la Cell for for no apparent reason the only thing that does make any sense is either for water runoff or some storing some i don't know exactly what it is it will fit a small child through Jonathan's a bit too big now as well but we have had a small child run through there before he volunteered his time and he wanted to have a look himself so he had a look through and again it's nothing nothing special but again this could be we could have a cafe here we could open a little Parisian cafe overlooking again just that beautiful wonderful countryside that you have here in France we are spoilt with being in such a beautiful area um, and for me that we love it we love everything about it we have the big old how did they move these things back in the day how like i can't get my head around this this we wouldn't be able to lift this now how did they move it because it completely blows my mind we're in our family area and there's still another building that we've got as well 
And again, not all the buildings are in fantastic condition. You look at this one, again, superb condition, good roof, everything's solid, no major problems. But as you know, we're going to be looking at basically making a cottage for Paula to come be able to stay out with Paula and Pete. And the perfect building for them is going to be this one down at our log store here. And this has been the perfect place to keep our wood. Well, for now, till Paula moves in. See, even then it might be perfect. All she'll have to do is stick a hand out the door. Out the door now. A lot of you don't know this even exists. So this is our little secret entrance into Paula's. And again, ugh. big old building that the roofs need sorting on. And again, we've already looked at it. We've already priced it. It's not something that's completely ridiculous and it's all doable, but this is going to be the perfect home for Paula and Pete. Again, it's not too big. It's a size that we can manage and we can do the majority of the works on. Anything structural, obviously, we always get somebody in and you have to do that. When it's structural, you have to get somebody in to sign it off for you because otherwise your insurance, it's a nightmare. So make sure you do do stuff like that. It's exactly what we do. And all of this, all of this can be done. I'd say with, we could probably get it done within six to eight months, looking at the way that we work. Possibly going to be started later in 2025, maybe 2026. So these are all in our schedule of works. It's all plans that we're going to get set into motion. But what we'll do is we'll pretty much have a little corridor in here. We'll knock this wall through and we'll put a wall down the centre here, which will give them a nice big kitchen, a uh, nice big bathroom in here. So this will be the bathroom, nice bath, nice shower, nice toilet. And then this side will be the kitchen. And what that also means is, again, we've thought it through. It means that we can bring all the plumbing out into a central one and put a new septic out the front. So again, all this has been well thought out. That wall here will lead you into the um, living room, dining area, which again, they are, it might not come across on camera, but these, these rooms are, what, probably 12 foot by 12 foot square and probably eight, 10 foot, eight foot high, I'd say, eight, nine foot. And then this side here will be the bedroom, all with beautiful landscape and views right onto the front. So again, nothing that we could not do this in the UK, we just couldn't. There's, there's no way, even buying a piece of property like this will cost a fortune just to do up. So we know that we can do it. We know we've got the skills to do the majority of the work here. And that's exactly what we'll do in the long run. So we hope you've enjoyed because we've really enjoyed showing you around and getting you to have a look around at what, what 300,000 euros can actually buy you in France. And you can all do it. So if you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and make sure you've got the bell click for notifications. And I think it's beer o'clock. See you soon. If you'd like to be part of our journey and help restore the chateau, then please join us on Patreon, where you'll be part of our journey, receive a piece of the history, and get exclusive videos.